So we get a lot of questions about who can inherit BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutations. And there's a lot of misconception that this type of hereditary cancer risk can only affect women and only be passed down by a mom um, or from the maternal side of the family. And so this is a, a nice quick bit to clarify um, some of those um, misconceptions that we often see and I often can see um, in my own practice. Um, so in all of this, when we think about BRCA1 and BRCA2, men very much count too. So both men and women alike can carry BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutations. If we think about basic uh, genetics, if we take it back probably to ninth grade biology, um, we each um, have 46 chromosomes, 23 pairs, um, and tightly wound on those chromosomes are segments of DNA, which are genes. And so BRCA1 and BRCA2 are in chromosomes 17 and 13, respectively. Both men and women have chromosomes 17 and 13, therefore can bo both have mutations and both um, potentially pass down to either their uh, sons or daughter daughters, respectively. Um, so when we think about um, in the cancer clinic or in the risk assessment clinic, um, when we're eliciting a family history, some individuals um, fail to include their father's side of the family or fail to, fail to include that they have brothers or uncles. Um, and it's very much an important part of the equation. And so the father's side counts just as much as the mother's side. Um, because though men um, who carry mutations have less risk than women, they still have risk nonetheless, which I'll talk about. So when I'm um, in clinic with my patients, um, oftentimes or sometimes I can see uh, patients um, discussing or reviewing their maternal side or their mother's side of the family or uh, cancer history or medical history surrounding their mothers, their sisters, their daughters. Um, but I have to say, where are all the guys? Um, and they go, well, what, you know, this is breast cancer. This is ovarian cancer risk. I, I didn't know that they, they counted, so to speak. Um, and because men can carry BRCA1 and two mutations respectively, and also because men can carry increased risk due to those mutations, it is highly important that we include both sides of the family. Um, when we think about the associated risks with men, um, there can be an increased or appreciable risk to develop breast cancer um, as a BRCA1 or 2 carrier. Um, though it is not as high as a woman's risk to develop breast cancer in the setting of a BRCA or BRCA mutation, it's exponentially elevated above the average gentleman's risk. So um, men kind of in the, in the general average risk population probably aren't thinking about breast cancer on their day-to-day. -day. And I hope women in general aren't thinking about breast cancer on their day-to-day. -day. Um, but about one in a thousand men in the general population will develop breast cancer. But when, in the presence of a BRCA2 mutation specifically, that risk can be increased to about a five to 7%. So though that still sits less than the average woman's risk, which is about a 13%, that's an exponential elevation. And the issue there is men, it's not on their radar. And so, you know, men are aren't often doing what we call clinical breast exams or chest wall exams or taking this type of information to their doctor. Um, and so this can be a very um, eye-opening or clarifying piece of the consultation when I'm meeting with women and men specifically. Um, there's also a risk for prostate cancer and some of these prostate cancers we can see are more aggressive. And so they definitely um, are, um, prostate cancer rather is, is, a, is a cancer that's common in men um, but we very much would want to make sure that a man in the setting of a BRCA1 or 2 mutation is being appropriately surveilled um, for purposes of early detection and intervention. Um, when we think about can these mutations be passed down to either a daughter or a son, the answer is both. Um, you know, the timing of testing is different in, in the younger generation, um, though this isn't necessarily clinically actionable in men at age 25 like it is that of women, meaning we don't start PSA or prostate screening. Um, we wouldn't necessarily be talking about a chest wall exam at 25. Um, it also can be very important or useful for men to know, maybe in that age range when they're thinking about family planning. And so, um, you know, some men might use this information to think about how um, they might um, grow their family. Um, so these are all things to kind of consider holistically when thinking about BRCA mutations as a whole, that men very much count to. Um, they're very much part of the equation. And though women tend to be the kinky birds and the historians of the family, um, you know, they are just as much a part of this as, um, as their female counterparts.